Good day guys and welcome back to the channel to this review where I am in the great outdoors and I think it is particularly appropriate for this watch uh, more so than almost any other watch that I've done you know perhaps the Pro Trek PRW6100 that I have reviewed before but you know I think this one is even more suited uh, to an outdoor setting so what I have here today is the G-Shock Mudmaster GWG 1000 DC for desert camouflage you know so this is really um, without a doubt the biggest watch that I have ever featured on the channel it is just massive and we'll go into the details here so uh, this this is actually no longer in production they have discontinued it uh, you know the, the desert uh, camouflage uh, band there as well as the slight differences in the design so uh, if you can appreciate the differences you know the numbers are uh, I guess slightly different you know they're a little bit more on the browny uh, uh, tan colored compared to the original uh, you know 1001 a uh, and of course this is a very different band it, it has a a desert camouflage type pattern on it you know that that kind of desert colors that you see there uh, as well as the orange highlights so you can see uh, where it's this barometer and temperature that there's kind of this orangey color as well as the word mud master uh, at the six o'clock or at least the bottom half of the dial that you can see there so original MSRP I think was uh, documented to be 800 but you know the Mud Masters are 750 US so they're around that for the MSRP of course you're going to pay uh, somewhat less than that depending on where you get it from uh, online retail etc uh, and I was lucky enough to get this on clearance because ironically they reduced the price because it was going to be discontinued I think if I'm lucky enough this hopefully will actually be a model that is in demand and will appreciate in value rather than fall with time. Um, so what we have here is a massive 56 millimeter wide black resin case. Uh, it is 18 millimeters in thickness. So it is pretty much the largest G-Shock, I think, second only to the newest Gravity Master, which uh, we're talking about one millimeter in difference, you know, uh, it, it is really one of the very largest G-Shocks you'll ever find uh, currently on the market. Um, you know, 50, 56 across and the width here, but if you measure it, uh, just to give you an idea where the button is flush against the case, so for example, across here, uh, it, it is actually 48 millimeters, so it, it doesn't quite wear as huge as a 56 millimeter circle around, uh, you know, on your on your wrist. You know, it's, it's not quite like that. Uh, that's why it, it sort of works. Um, now, screw construction. Now, you can't see the screws there because it's got the guards on, right? You can see those. Well, I guess fillers on here, the wings, uh, but but you know there, there are screws under there when you remove those to change the bands, which I have done before. Um, you have a smart access screw down style crown here on the three o'clock position and then you have all steel construction mud and dust resistant buttons to give you you know that mud master specification of mud resistance uh, sapphire on the top and in total you're getting 200 meters of water rating uh, and you're getting the usual G shock shock resistance as well as in this model you're getting alpha gel around the module to give you vibration resistance um, the the dial you know take a look at it I, I, I love it you know I really really like this dial it's a black layered um, dial with a neo bright loom now the loom is not fantastic but you know it, it functions it functions well enough in the night for me as, as I've used it uh, you're getting a mode sub dial at the 10 o'clock position there uh, with that you know military style arrow marker there um, you're getting a negative LCD display on the 6 o'clock position now I'm not sure whether this is a STN whether this is a super twisted pneumatic display uh, in my research uh, it's not overtly stated by Casio so maybe it's not even though the ProTrek module which is essentially the same module uh, in the 6100 that I've reviewed before it does actually say it's an STN display so who knows it, it works fine enough uh, with 
uh, the weaknesses that uh, negative LCD displays do represent, uh, at least subjectively for me. Uh, it does have dual LED that's operated by this light here, this button here, and the 6 o'clock position. You can see that there, and there's a backlight uh, on the LCD display for uh, lighting at night. Um, okay, so the movement, this is the uh, tough solar triple sensor module 5463, you know, it's quartz multifunction. It operates essentially the same as the PRW6100 module. So I don't have to spend too much time going into the details. Take a look at the ProTrek review uh, for the details if you wish. Uh, it is a tough movement, meaning it's got hybrid mount uh, to make the hands more resistant to shocks and whatnot. It's got an auto home position correction. if you know, for whatever reason you get a big enough shock that the hands move out of position. Multiband 6, you can see, uh, does says multiband 6, so terrestrial antenna reception. Unfortunately, you can't get that in Australia. You, you get it mostly in the Northern Hemisphere countries, Europe, Asia, uh, the uh, North American countries. It does have a smart access crown, and I'll, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail as to whether it's good or not, but, you know, it's screwed down, and I'll just unscrew it. Uh, right now. Digital compass accessed by the two o'clock button here. And you can see it points to north and it gives you the reading there. All right, I've already covered this with the other uh, module. Uh, altimeter, right, in one millimeter uh, resolution all the way from minus 700 to 10,000 meters in one meter steps. You get relative readings, you're getting a 30 uh, memory uh, log if you wish to store uh, altimeter readings. Okay, and then going into the other sensors, you're getting a barometer, which really is uh, a, uh, the, the real sensor is actually a pressure sensor from which the altimeter reading is derived. Okay, you're getting a temperature sensor. Right, right now is a very pleasant 27 degrees, I've got to say, uh, right now in Perth, Western Australia. Um, this is the memory mode, I won't go into it, but 30 memories along with the automatic log of uh, the maximum, the minimum, uh, the cumulative ascent and descent uh, that you, know, you can uh, read out as you go through the, the settings here. It's got a 24 hour, one 100 second stopwatch with split time measurement, you know, nothing too special, right, fairly standard for a G-Shock. It's got a 24 hour Sorry, it's actually got only a 60 uh, minute, one second countdown timer. So that, that perhaps is the weakest part of this particular module. You know, a lot of the cheaper G-Shocks you can get for well under $100 have a far uh, longer 24 hour timer. So I, I'm not sure why they have limited uh, this particular module to 60 minutes. Uh, five alarms like every other G-Shock I've ever featured. Uh, world time, okay, world time is interesting in this case. It is, um, a 30 zone, uh, so 29 cities plus UTC at the 12 o'clock position there. Um, and it is limited to 30 rather than more because it's indicated by that uh, bezel ring. You know, those, those cities are indicated there. So um, as you can select world time, you can actually get it to show what city you're on. So I've selected Sydney as the uh, world time uh, alternate uh, display here. So what's, what's it actually say that it is 3.14 home time and it is 5.14 in Sydney is, is what the main display is now demonstrating. To change it, you need to unscrew the smart crown, pull it out, and then you can go, say, for example, to whatever that city is. Apologies, I don't really know what NOU is. Uh, this is Wellington, you know, so it's uh, two hours further ahead than Sydney and uh, really four hours further ahead than where I am in Perth. Um, okay, and then go back to that to go back into the default setting and you have to screw it back. So, you know, you can already see there's a slight weakness and a gripe that I'm, I'm having with the smart crown here. All right, going forward again, you're getting into uh, the, the receive mode here. So, uh, if you are in the zone where you can receive the radio signal for the time, uh, you can control it here and check out when you last had a signal. Uh, I, of course, can't receive it, so it's not really that relevant to me. And then going back to the home there. 
Okay, so uh, the band here is resin, just like G-Shocks are, every other G-Shock that I've seen and featured, uh, but this has a nice texture to it. So it adds a bit of layer to it, uh, along with the printing on the desert camo that you can see there. Okay, so inside there's a bit of texture as well. And then you're getting stainless steel uh, buckle with double prong, as well as this keeper with a few more printings of the G-Shock. So there's a nice, slightly more premium touch uh, to this watch, which is of course a master of G range watch. So what I've liked about it, it's it's a Mudmaster. It's a freaking Mudmaster, you know. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's so massive. It's over the top design, you know, that militaresque look. I really, you know, it's growing on me. You see the just how angular some of these cuts on the cases are, you know, that button that's PVD treated on the bottom here. It's I uh, you know, the this I don't have to say much more about the design, it, it really is um, its own thing and of all the analog digital Master of G's, uh, this is definitely my pick, uh, you know, over the Golf Master, over the Gravity Master. It's got an extensive range of features in a triple sensor, tough movement module, it's, you know, it's encased in one of the toughest multi-resistant constructions you're going to find, uh, vibration, uh, shock resistant mud and dust as well. Uh, it's got atomic time solar. It is just packed with stuff. Um, you know, what's not so good? Well, the size as well as the height. It is 18 uh, millimeters by 56 wide. So it is a presence on the wrist, but it's still, it's only 119 gram. You know, about the same weight as my uh, uh, Citizen Titanium watch. You know, it, it, you know, certainly lighter than the luxury divers that I have. Uh, now, um, the other gripe is really about the smart access, you know, to say, for example, if I go into timer mode, uh, right, to, it, it's set on one minute. If I need to change that, well, you need to unscrew the crown, you need to pull it out, and then you need to set your time. And if you're trying to do that in a hurry, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. You know, some of the other cheaper G-Shocks, you really just hold down the set button, uh, and away you go, you're going to set the time and then you can start it. So, you know, yes, it's a nice feature, you know, it gives a little bit more of a premium feel with the screw down there. Uh, but I just wonder whether it does get in the way a bit and it doesn't uh, allow you to set some things as quick and as conveniently as you wish. Uh, you know, I, I think perhaps for a feature particularly like the timer, they could have perhaps use the set button, you know, make that a set button and then uh, let you uh, go up and down with uh, these two o'clock and four o'clock buttons like many other uh, G-Shocks do. Maybe that's a better way to do it, uh, but they've chosen to implement that on the Smart Crown and that's, you know, that, that, that hasn't been the best thing, not my favorite part of it. Okay, so lastly, I'm just going to put on the wrist shot. And there you have it. Look look at that on the wrist. It's just, you know, you could say it's way over the top, you know. It's probably too big for my 17-inch wrist. Uh, but somehow, because it's a G-Shot, because it's resin, because it's light, and it's also stealthy black with a negative display, somehow it, just, it gets away with it. I, I don't know what it is about G-Shocks, you know. Let me know what you think about that, you know. Why? Can you wear a 56 millimeter G-Shock? But if you wear 56 millimeter steel, you're just gonna look like a douchebag. So, you know, guys, there we have it. That's the G-Shock Master of G, GWG 1000 DC Mud Master. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have it uh, or any other Master of G, what you think, you know, how your experience has been. I've really loved this and enjoyed it. So guys, uh, thank you again for watching this video. Uh, subscribe to keep in touch. Give us a like if you've enjoyed it. And as always, I will catch you next time.